Alex Haig here, back with the Market Report. I've been known to be the stats guy. I love stats. Kind of got away from it a little bit because we had some other services that took some things over. Uh, but we're back here doing our Market Reports. And, and uh, one of the questions that we're getting a lot now is, how is the market doing? Well, it depends. What market are you talking about? And today, I'm going to go over two things. What I did was I did single family homes from condominiums and the inventory that is in each of those respective markets. What I have here is the single family homes and Flex MLS, which covers Indian River really down in a, a really good idea of what's going on in the single family home market. Look at this, you can see here, this is all single family homes, no price point or anything like that. This goes back 14 months. So you can see down here, this starts in uh, 123, that's 14,202 units that were on sale on the market in January of 23. We come over here, we see uh, January of 24, and we can see that there's been about 2,000 more units that have come on the market. Now, typically, this time of year, we actually move uh, kind of usually down. So usually inventory starts down, but it did creep up a little bit. What I'm meaning by that is, is that we have the uh, January of last year of 23, there was 14,000, then it went down to 13,000 and 12,000. That kind of didn't happen this year. The inventory rose actually a little bit. And, you know, that that's, I think, what's causing this tension out there. The inventory usually either decreases or kind of stays the same through the summer. And then the inventory usually rises in the third quarter where people haven't moved for school. And, you know, people up in uh, wherever you are, New England or Chicago or Maine or whatever, you're not looking at houses in Florida because you're enjoying that. And then it kind of trickles up usually a little bit into into November and December a little bit, uh, but then it usually dies down as we can see here, right? So that didn't change or that did change, but a little bit different. But the one thing I want, and I, I did this on a YouTube video that I did a couple weeks ago, this is kind of what I want you to see. And, and I was recently talking to another colleague about this. It's a little kind of economics 101 and it doesn't quite add up completely is usually when you see inventory rise, right? Supply and demand economics 101 type thing. Usually the, the inventory or the price per square foot, you'll get pressure on prices and they will go down. We didn't see that. We actually saw prices kind of continue to rise. We did have this kind of move down in uh, February, but as a collective over the last quarter or the last quarter of last year, you did see a little rise here. It kind of dropped off a little bit, and then it shot back up. So values are not dropping. So when people say, how's the market doing? I'm like, well, the inventory is rising in the single-family home market. I'm going to get to the condo market here in a second. But I just want to show you the last 14 months what's going on right now. Values are staying level, and really they increased here over the last, which is really kind of odd, but it is what it is. So I wanted to move down here a little bit and show you this line here is the original listing price to sale price. And you can see that's all in the 90s. So people are getting over 90% just over here in the 89s a little bit. But the last you know 12 months, we've seen the original listing price to sale price be in the 90 percentile. These, this graph right here is actually the days on the market. So the days on the market was higher last year but we're pretty much the same as we were last year, 324. But we see actually, they're actually just a day more on the market. So properties are staying on the market pretty much as long as they were at this time last year. Now, you all know how I like to look at the month supply of inventory, right? So the month supply of inventory, single family homes. And so we understand how this works, whether you're in a, a seller's market, a neutral market, or a buyer. A seller's market is under three months of inventory. So you can see in here, this was a seller's market pretty much through the summer into the fall. And then the month supply of inventory rose as that inventory, which I showed you a little bit earlier. This is just a kind of a, a graphic of month supply of inventory. And typically what that is, is is like an absorption thing. So the more inventory there is, uh, if you have high inventory, like we had in 2008 or nine, which some people are comparing this to 2008 and nine, it's not even close. Uh, 2008 and nine, you saw up to 18 months of inventory, almost two years of inventory. We just barely peaked into a buyer's market. 
in January of this year, and then it dropped off. We're still in that neutral market and right between a neutral market of a seller's market, buyer's market, seller's market, whichever way we want to go up or down, and it's actually going down. So I think that you know this is a good sign for the single family home market that this inventory is being absorbed and we are trending down towards a seller's market again. We're, you know, 1.8 months away from being in that back into that seller's market. Now, I want to get into the condo market here because this is a little bit of a different story. You can see this is not atypical. This is not out of the ordinary for the condo market to be right around this level of inventory. But it really stayed pretty level through. It didn't spike down. It didn't spike up. It stayed pretty level through here, right? But then when we hit third quarter, which is is kind of where these assessments started coming in from the Surfside collapse into these condo markets and people started getting hit with these higher assessments, right? That, that you know, the building had to be re-engineered and it had to be looked at and new spalling put in and these kind of things. People started getting hit with these with these assessments and that really started to get people putting their properties on the market. And we've seen this escalation now. You can see this going up this way for the last, you know, two quarters, it's been going up. Right. So you see this escalation of the condo market up. And, you know, we're we're nearly double the inventory of where we were, you know, 14 months ago, but almost a year ago. So I want you to see that. This just as a side note, this is the pending line. So this is good. We're seeing the pendings go up. So that should drive this line, which is the solds, up as well, which should absorb this inventory and start to bring it down. This is obviously from March, so we're in April now as of this video, and we'll see where the April numbers come in in May. Here's another interesting thing. The prices are actually still going up in the condo market. It's really nonsensical. You'd think that this would start to put pressure down in here, right? But it's not. It's not putting pressure. We're actually seeing the price per square foot go up since the inventory has gone up, and that's my colleague, Bill Dean, um, we were like, I just don't understand. It doesn't kind of add up. So it's going to, we'll see how this shakes out, but the price per square foot is still up in that condo market. Now that does include villas and townhomes, but I include that because it shows that collective assessment situation because ta- condos and, and uh, villas are getting those same assessments as well. So coming down here into people are still getting over 90% of their list original listing price to sale price. 64 days on the market is only three more days than the single family home market. So that's still pretty healthy. Um, so that all looks pretty good. Uh, it's it's pretty flat. It doesn't move quite like the single family home market, but it's pretty, it's moved up a little bit for sure, but not anything to me that should be hyper alarming. So I'll finish on this slide here. And I think that this is that you saw that month supply of inventory in the single family home market that looked very similar to this and looked very similar to this, but it didn't go up as high as this 9.2 months on the market. Uh, back then I was looking at this. I'm like, man, if this keeps going, we got a problem, but it started to get absorbed. And so that month supply of inventory is going down. That being said, we're still in a buyer's market, technically a trending towards a neutral market and obviously trending eventually to a seller's market if this continues down this way. But we're going to have to see how this shakes out. So it's kind of like, I want to say it's a tale of two markets. We have the tale of the single family home market, which is lower inventory, but still escalating prices, values. And we're seeing in the condo market, still an escalation of inventory, but the price per square foot is still going up, which is uh, just hard to kind of wrap one's head around. Now, this is a big macro picture. And in later videos, I'm going to start to get into more of these areas and these price points because that the story continues to unfold. If you're looking in Port St. Lucie, for instance, under 350000 you are well into a seller's market. Uh, whereas if you're in a condo and you're in like above a million dollars, depending on what county you're in, would be really in a buyer's market. 
or you could even be in a neutral market, depending on the price point, depending on the area. And that's why you really want to have a good agent to, that understands this data so that you can make a good decision. And you can say, for instance, if you just looked at this as a general, you might say, hey, you know, I'm kind of in a buyer's market here. So if there's more inventory on the market, I need to really price myself properly if you need to sell by a certain time. So I hope that this was very helpful to you. I'm, I've pledged that these are going to come out every couple of weeks now, kind of back onto my same cadence that I was on before. We're bringing them back to you. And of course, if you have any questions, please reach out. We'd love to talk to you about where you stand as a, a comparative market analysis in a community, and then also where you stand as a collective in that broader community, whether it's a condo, villa, townhome, area, price point, so forth, and kind of how you want to position yourself given that inventory in the market with your market analysis as well. And this this is a little bit more in depth than most people go, but I think it's really important for buyers and sellers out there to see because as a buyer, you could say, hey, and again, it depends on what area you're looking in, but you could be in a buyer's market and that means you can go out and make some offers because there's a lot more inventory on the market. That's a buyer's market. You can wheel and deal and and uh, but you can see that the price per square foot is kind of still going up. So it's not like you're going to go out there and, you know, sometimes you can find people that absolutely want to sell. So I digress, but hopefully this information was helpful to you. If there's anything we can ever do to help, please reach out and stay well. Thank you so much.